say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in the farmer's kitchen, in town farmer's country kitchen. Cook something good now. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen brought to you by Woods Equipment Company has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Rose Farm Supply, family farming and commitment to our customers since 1982. House Warmings, meeting all of your outdoor living and fireplace needs. Mrs. Farmer. Hello. It looks good. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. You know what? We are preparing our garden for vegetables for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen, which happens to be way up on the hill, the harvest cabin. But you know what? Let's take a little look around right now. As we look around over this way, right in front of the garden, this is just a little couple acres right down here. You can do so much on a couple acres. Right over here is the pig pen, which will be the sheep pen this year. Right up the hill from that, is our smokehouse where we are hanging a ham as we speak, which is about to go through the June sweats. And Mrs. Farmer is watching me garden. Is that not, you know, you know that you've reached uh, midlife when your entertainment is watching people garden? The hard part's the next though, me, planting the stuff. Oh, you, you watch need, me. You don't need help? <laughs> no, you're gonna help? Good. No, I can help. Hey, I wanna show you something real quick. Now, what? remember a little while ago when I was mowing? Oh yeah. Uh, there was almost a catastrophe. Yes, I heard. Come over here, Kelly, follow us. It was a near catastrophe. And I saw a tuft of hair blow out and I saw little moving what is it? critters. Now, let me show you what to look for if you're ever mowing around. How to, to you watch it. this? Well, you know. Okay. Now, you remember when John Casper was talking about breeding rabbits, how they pull their hair out? Well, look what we've got right here. Now, I'm gonna put this all back together. And I had to take these little guys and put them all back in Oh my here. goodness, can we hold them? That one's hyper. Now, some people would say, now if you touch those animals, the mother will never come back. Well, the mother's instinct is to come back and she will come back. Now, my problem is around here, there's a lot of feral cats. A lot of people don't have their animals spayed or neutered around here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some, help me get some of this grass over here, Nikki. How will she, how does she take care of them then? Does she sit on them she at night? She comes back in there and gets right in there with them. And this was all covered. Really? Yep. And now here's the problem. You know what the problem is? Our garden's right there. Uh oh. So these she's are smart. Our, these, she... are, these are our, our sworn enemies. But how in the world could you get mad at them? No. Meanwhile, I've got up on the harvest cabin. We got a big green egg set up on the porch up there. We're going to cook a duck. But first, as we look around, look at the woods. Look at the ground. You can't believe as you look around you. We got blackberries coming on right there. But as you look around, there are many, many plants that you can pick right off trees, right off the ground, put in your mouth and eat them. They're really? good for you. Let's find out more about edible plants all over the place in Kentucky.
It's springtime, obviously, the leaves are out, which makes me think of leafy plants that you can cram in your mouth and chew up and swallow. And it does me too. I like that. Craig Cottle, tell us who you're with and why you're here. I am Craig Cottle, the director of Nature Reliance School, and we're coming to hang out with you today to talk about eating weeds. Eating weeds. Yeah. You know, everybody knows, and most people know, that it's some things like dandelions, you can make greens out mm -hmm. of them, you can eat them in salad, so on and so forth. But there are lots of things around us including this time of year, morels. Oh yeah, this is a good time of year. May apples. But mm -hmm. well, we're gonna take a little tour and talk about some stuff. Uh, we're gonna also talk about being in the woods, period. What happens if you are in Red River Gorge or somewhere in a vast part of the country where you might get lost. You might have a few tips and tactics to yeah, help us out. Yeah, be happy to do that too. And you brought your wife along. Yeah, she's the she's the eating weeds expert she's the, she's with, a, in this couple here, so all we'll right. let her do all that. We'll let her do that, then we'll get a few tips on the other. And, uh, First of all, we're going to take a walk through the woods and just see what we can find to put on our plate. Sounds good. Thank Let's you. do it. Jennifer. Hi. You pointed up here. What we got? We have got garlic mustard. This is an invasive plant, so but it's, it's not yummy. from here. Grows everywhere. People will try to get rid of this thing in their yards, but it grows pretty much it's anywhere. It's got a garlic smell. Mm -hmm. It's great in savory recipes. You can eat it raw or cooked, and well, there's so plenty of it, so you don't have to worry about pulling up too much. Now let me ask you this: Is this year? Is it good year round? Is it better in the spring when the leaves are I would get better it now. in the spring? I would get it now. Yeah. Which is the way of most plants, by the in mm -hmm. early spring is when. Later in the year, the more bitter things tend to taste, and, mm -hmm. and some people prefer that, but right now is probably when um, it would be most suitable. So I, I could, how, how would you use this? Would you, could you put it in a soup? You could or? saute it, put it in a soup, um, put it in a casserole. You could eat it raw, just a few pieces in a salad. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't use just this. I would mix it with other greens, I think. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Very garlicky. I think it would be good in Italian dishes. Garlic mustard. Garlic mustard. Put that on my list. Okay. Let's go find something else. All right. That's an easy one. That's a wild onion. A little something to go with your garlic mustard. Oh. Yes. Now you can tell that that's, it's tiny, but it packs a punch. It does, so you yes. use that for the same thing you use onions in, but be careful because they're yeah. stout. I would use that sparingly because they are stout. My children used to love to pick them up and eat them raw when they were little, so. Wow. Yeah. I bet yeah. they smell good. Mm -hmm. Now that's an easy one. Mm -hmm. Wild, Wild onion. onion. Right there. Use sparingly. They pack a punch. Henbit. 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 Good for drying and making tea. Has really? a very potent smell. If you crush it up, um, grows like crazy in people's gardens and in their yards and they're pulling it up. and can't miss it by the smell. Very distinctive smell when you're mm -hmm. mowing and you hit a bunch yes. of this. You always smell that. This is what you can smell in the summertime. So you make a tea bit. out of that. Tea. Do you dry the leaves first? Or yes. You can... you can dry them in the sun or in the oven or dehydrator, but it makes a nice tea. Well, son of a gun, this is an old-fashioned thing. Does it have any caffeine in it or just, I don't just the taste? So. Hen bit. Who knew? All right, a lot of people are going to recognize this. I recognize it because my dad used to make me dig it up out of the yard. Oh no. He hated his dandelions. He had this little fork-like tool that I had to pop uh, them out. Yep, that was fun. Big long roots, they're tough. Yeah. Yeah. Well, too bad you didn't dry the roots and use them for a coffee or a tea. Really? Mm-hmm. The roots are edible. Actually, all the parts of a dandelion are edible, except the fuzzy part that would probably get caught in your throat. The fuzzy part. I wouldn't eat part. that part. I wouldn't eat the fuzzies. But, Dandelions are fantastic. Um, so these are good like just in a salad? They are. You can cook them. They're, they have a, a bitter, unique taste, which mm -hmm. um, we lack in our diet, so that's a good thing. You can cook them, you can dry them, you can eat them fresh. They have more beta carotene than carrots, and wow. they have more iron and calcium than spinach. So they're really, really good for you. It really is flavorful, but mm -hmm. like you say, it's a bit bitter. It is bitter, it Probably. is bitter good source of power. I like to add a little sweet um, dressing or something to it if I use them in a salad. Like a vinaigrette? Mm -hmm. Now you said there's something else in here we need to look at. Wood sorrel, it's my favorite. Wood sorrel. Wood sorrel. 
it has vitamin C in it. And that's about the only thing it's really known for as far as nutritional value. It's easy to tell because it's three little hearts. It's the first thing I teach children when I do classes. It looks similar to clover, which has more like egg-shaped leaves. These have hearts, but when you eat it, very lemony and tart. Ooh. Really a pleasant taste. That is good. It's very good. I want some more of that to get the yep. dandelion taste in my mouth. You eat this raw. If you cook it, it turns dark brown and kind of ugly and loses its flavor. So you want to eat this fresh. That is but really good. But it's wonderful. My kids love it. Um, we, we like to grab it when we're on the trail. It's refreshing. Really nice plant. I'm glad to know that. Mm -hmm. That's really good. All right, now, usually when you hear the word plantain, you think about little bananas, but... Completely different plant. This plantain. right here. Mm -hmm. Now, when I was a kid, they called this broadleaf, or, or like a variation of this. Is it the same family? Probably. There's broadleaf plantain or common plantain, mm -hmm. and then there's lance leaf or English. The mm -hmm. terms are generally used interchangeably. You can eat this, but it's, it's stringy and tough. Mm -hmm. My favorite use for this is to crush it up. Mm -hmm. You can even chew it up, crush it up, bruise it. And if you get a sting, if um, you have a skin irritation, a rash, a blister while you're out and about, you, you break this up, get it bruised, pack it on there. What's in put there? Put a Band-Aid over it. I'm not sure. This is just an old thing that's been passed down through, It is. It, it, it works so well. So squeeze out. Let's just take a look at what get that looks juice. like. Squeeze the fire out of it and, uh -huh. just, and just hold it on there. And just put it on there and it's instant relief. You, you, no you think, kidding. oh, this is so wonderful, yeah. Next yeah. time, I got bees right up there, so next time I get stung, I'm gonna yeah. try that. This is much better than anything you can buy for a sting. Redbud. Redbud tree. Hey, you know what happens when they come out? The crappie are biting. Really? White bass are running. I didn't know that. Generally. Okay. That's a good fishing tip. What the old timers say. Well, red buds are very easy to spot. Right. And they have these little flowers in the springtime. Mm -hmm. And these are a wonderful snack. <gasps> I never knew. Kind of mm -hmm. crunchy, sort of nutty, a little bit sweet. And it will not hurt the tree to pull these off and eat them. No they're, harm gonna, done. they're just going to fall They're just anyway. going to fall off anyway. I eat these fresh and I eat them raw. That's really got a kind of a sweet taste. Mm hmm. Nutty, like they're you fun. Said. They're a little bit crunchy. Now, how do you know all this stuff? Years of practice, reading you know and going out, doing it. That's one of my favorite things so far. Mm -hmm. I love this in the wood sorrel. Probably my two favorites. So far, those are my favorites. Mm -hmm. And most of these things are, are more nutritional than anything you can buy, and they're so readily available. Everyone has them, or or at least some of these things, right in their backyard. I am really kind of shocked at that. I mean, flowers. <laughs> All right, now when I was a kid growing up in Mason County, we had a huge patch of these wild strawberries. Yum! Delicious. Awesome. So sweet. But then also, we'd go to some neighbors who had a yard that had something that looked like a strawberry but had zero taste to it. Probably an Indian strawberry. They usually, the berries are upright, the seeds are on the outside mm -hmm. of the berry instead of um, sort of compressed in there, and the flowers tend to be yellow. Gotcha. And they're, they're tasteless, but they're also harmless. Yeah. So I got some of these guys coming up. Here. These are the good ones. These are common strawberries, and they're the ones that are going to be sweet. Yeah. And wonderful. Also, these leaves, um, you can dry these leaves and use them for um, upset stomach with children. And the strawberries themselves are just good. We have gotten so far away from everything that surrounds us. We walk by a tree and you say, here, grab this, and it, it's tasty. You know that the Native Americans probably utilized every bit of this kind of stuff. I'm sure. And I guarantee you they had probably no stomach issues. Probably not. They knew exactly <laughs> what to run to and grab. Strawberries, look around Strawberries. for them. Right here on the edge of the woods. And you know, a lot of the stuff we're finding is not really in the woods and not really on, on the edges, it's kind of out. That's on, a on great the... point, is that most of your edible medicinal plants are gonna be in disturbed areas, yards, parking lots, unfortunately on the side of the interstate, which is not a good place to find them, but it's very abundant there. All right, you were, were walking down this trail here, we're going towards the water, um, and you said, I wish we could find some violets, and boom. Boom, there's one. What's up with the violets? Violets are a great source of vitamin C. There's only one here, so I'm not gonna pick it. No, there's it. actually two, look are here. Are there? Okay. Oh, okay, cool. Well, they're a great source of vitamin C. 
you eat the purple ones. A lot of times you'll see yellow ones and white ones. Don't eat the yellow ones and the white ones. They're a little more rare anyway, but um, those are not good for you. The purple ones though, a mild sweet taste. They're full of vitamin C. Um, you eat the very whole bud? easy to spot. Mm -hmm. Very mild, very pleasant tasting. You can also eat these leaves, but only eat the leaves if you find one with the flower attached. Oh really? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that can look like this that aren't good for you, so <laughs> only eat violet leaves if you find one with a violet on it. Now, I want to take this time right here to say that know these things carefully before you get it. If you're a kid and you want to do this, you take your mom and dad with you. Make sure they have some kind of guide and know for sure because there are things out there that can make you sick. Mm -hmm. We don't want anybody to get sick. Let's go find something else. Stuff that you walk over and step on every day. Chickweed. It, chickweed. Chickweed. It's um, very mild. Wonderful for anyone with any kind of upset stomach, um, sore throat. It's very um, soothing in your system. Very mild. Just Tastes wonderful. Mm -hmm. This is one of my favorite plants. Um, in a survival type situation, a lot of times you can even dig through the snow if you know where to look for this already and find it. Mm. It's about the first thing to come up in the spring and it'll stick around with us until it hits about 80, 85 degrees consistently and then this is going to die off mm -hmm. and it's going to go away till next year. But it is a wonderful plant. Chickweed, I, just the leaves. Mm -hmm. You can eat the stems too, and the flowers. There's little bitty white flowers. I use this as a spinach replacement. I use it chickweed. spinach dip, except I have chickweed dip, and you can put it in lasagna, anything. Wonderful, wonderful plant. I like it a lot. And everybody, well, not everybody, knows what these are, and they are. May apples. And the, the reason they have that name is because they have a little piece of fruit. And here's what they look like. The fruit is going to be on a two-year plant. It's going to have like a, a fork off of it with two leaves instead of just one like this one. Mm -hmm. And right here, there's going to be a little fruit. This one has already fallen off because we're catching this a week or two late. Mm -hmm. But that fruit and that fruit only can be used. You can cut it up and boil it in some water, add some sugar, and you have a lemonade sort of drink. Son of a gun. Very refreshing. Now, the plant itself is not edible, mm -hmm. just the fruit. Just the fruit, just so the stay fruit. away from the rest of it. Stay away from the rest Won't of it. Won't do you any good. Mm. Well, I'll tell you what, Jennifer has come out and shared with us a bunch of stuff. I've been grazing yes, off the I'm land. Told. You know what, you really could. I mean, yeah. if you look around you, I mean, and you were really hungry and had nothing going on. Yeah, definitely. You can put definitely. a little on the belly. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming Thank out and Thank you for having us. me. It's been great. Now, next week, Craig is going to show us a few survival tips if you're ever out there in the woods, way, way out in the woods, and you get stuck. And here we are at the beautiful Harvest Cabin, just up the hill from where we were a little while ago, and we've got our big green egg. Now, tonight we're going to do something really simple. It's so simple, it's almost silly. I like your hat, Grandma. Thank you. Is that my hat? Maybe. I'm trying to keep the sun on the good looking hat. <laughs> All right, here's what we're going to do. We have a duck. Some sesame oil. Just Yum. that simple. Yummy. Now let that me tell you good. what. The sesame oil and the duck. The skin of the duck is magic. I mean absolutely positively wonderful. And they're finding out that we need animal fats, natural animal fats, so I'm going to use that for an excuse to eat animal fats anytime I possibly can. People are cooking with lard now. Okay, there we are. Now, orange in the body cavity. Come back with some garlic powder. It smells good already. Oh, it smells delicious. Now, when that, you know how that it gets. When that gets, when that cooks into that skin, especially on the big green egg when you have those flavors, I'm going to pop that in there between 325 and 350 on top of that. Now you have to have your plate set in because the drippage would cause flare up. The sizzle. We're going to close that and how about that? We'll come back to this later. We're going to make a little sauce. Now when this gets nice and cooked we're going to take some peanut sauce, we're going to take some honey, we're going to take some soy, we're going to take some orange marmalade, a little bit more garlic and some ginger, squeeze the rest of that orange juice in there and oh my goodness. We'll be back after it's dark. Hi, I'm Lardo. And I'm Burley. And we're the Moron Brothers. Got a frog in my throat.
You know what you got when you got a harmonica player up to your neck and concrete? Not enough concrete. <laughs> All right, let's. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. took the duck off. Now when it starts doing things like this and it just crisps, oh, oh ooh, I'm telling you, that's when you know it's done. Now it's going to be super hot. But let me explain something. The skin on a duck is absolutely, positively scrumptious. Here's what we did. We took three heaping tablespoons of orange marmalade. I followed that up with two teaspoons of soy. Then I came back with just a little bit of peanut sauce. Then I came back with some honey, about two heaping tablespoons of honey, some garlic powder, a little bit of ginger, and just a tad of sesame oil in that, and you have. Oh my goodness. There's some meat for you. Now this is our dipping sauce right here. It's a dark but sweet sauce. Dip that in that sauce. Oh my, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. See that little pink smoke ring around there? Oh my, you've got to try you some duck. The skin on that is so brown and so tasty. When it soaks up that sesame oil, it's just a little bit of heaven. Remember to check out our Facebook page, like it, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Facebook page. Check us out on timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. Click on shows, click on YouTube, see things you haven't seen before. Next week, we're gonna take a visit. We're gonna explore the harvest cabin. You haven't seen anything yet. And talk about how you can pull one up on your private spot. But until next week, it's all about good times, good friends, and good eats. It's good. Dunk. To order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502 319 0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com.
Chrisman Mill Vineyards, Good Foods Co-op, Kinco Farm Fence Supplies, Kentucky Beer Cheese, Polecat Custom Smokers, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm, Weisenberger Mill, and Tim Farmer Productions. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen brought to you by Kentucky Sheep and Goat Development Office. Try something different tonight. Salt Rocks, the flavor of life. Harvest Energy Solutions, Harvest Cabins, when you absolutely have to get away.